We've had a really stimulating day so far, <laughs> and you've seen a lot of data uh, throughout all of these talks. So um, I'm just briefly going to run through my slides and um, really not show you any of the data um, because uh, I just want to make a few points about immunosuppression and the treatment of connective tissue disease, PAH. And um, the major point is we have very limited evidence. So um, I will briefly uh, show a few of my slides and then we'll uh, have our panel discussion so that we can finish somewhat on time. Uh, my disclosures. You've already seen um, these slides um, regarding the percentage of patients um, from who group 1 PAH who have connective tissue disease, about 15 to 30 percent, mostly scleroderma patients, uh, followed by lupus and mixed connective tissue disease. And the main point is there are no specific guidelines for the use of immunosuppression in the treatment of CTD-associated PAH. There thus far have not been any completed randomized controlled trials of an immunosuppressive therapy for PAH, and all the evidence is based on case reports and case series. Um, the current reports of immunosuppression in PAH are also confounded by the concurrent use of PAH-specific therapies, but it may be that combination therapy is where we should be going. And also, older case reports are confounded by the poor characterization of PAH. So just briefly, there are case reports or case series for um, use of steroids. Um, this is actually the only one I could find for corticosteroids. There's quite a bit of data supporting the use of cyclophosphamide in combination with steroids, particularly in patients with lupus or mixed connective tissue disease. And most of these studies have enrolled some patients with scleroderma, showing no benefit in those patients. So there are several studies. The, this was the largest with 28 patients. And the same group um, did a subsequent study with 23 patients with lupus and mixed connective tissue disease, again showing uh, similar benefit with cyclophosphamide and steroids, both as upfront therapy or in combination with pH-specific therapies. One of the, the main points um, here is that the responders to immunosuppressive therapy typically have less severe disease. So they typically have lower New York Heart Association functional class and less severe hemodynamics, and they typically have higher disease activity in terms of their underlying autoimmune disease. So several reports on cyclophosphamide and steroids. Um, mycophenolate mofetil um, has been mentioned lots of data supporting its use in preclinical studies in animal models. And there really hasn't been any clinical data thus far other than in the Pharaohs database that Ginny leads, um, which is a US-based early uh, PAH cohort of scleroderma patients. So just looking at those with restrictive lung disease with an FVC of less than 70% predicted, those who were treated with MMF had better survival than those who were not. Similarly, as um, others have mentioned today, um, Etta's work with FK506, um, definitely strong indication in preclinical studies that FK506 may have a role in the treatment of PAH patients. And Etta and Roham and others have treated three patients with end-stage PAH, one with idiopathic disease, one with scleroderma-associated PAH, and one with drugs and toxins-associated PAH. And after uh, the use of low-dose FK506 for a year to 27 months, the patients had clinical improvement as demonstrated by multiple different parameters. So there, I believe, is currently a phase 2B multicenter trial that is being planned to use low-dose uh, FK506 for the treatment of idiopathic PAH. So there have been a few case reports for the use of rituximab in lupus, in mixed connective tissue disease, and in scleroderma PAH, showing benefit in hemodynamics or in other markers of uh, disease severity in PAH. And Mark has already mentioned uh, the rituximab trial that he is leading here now enrolled 44 of 60 subjects. 
So just finally, briefly, there's been so much talk about IL-1 and IL-6 today and its role in uh, PAH. And just looking through the literature, there are, again, case reports in autoimmune-associated PAH patients, adult onset stills, the use of anakinra has been shown to improve PAH um, in a patient with adult onset stills. And likewise, tocilizumab has shown a similar benefit. However, there has been a study looking at um, patients with um, ju juvenile idiopathic arthritis uh, who had pulmonary complications. Um, 16 of 25 patients had PAH, and the rest had either um, alveolar uh, proteinosis that Dr. Trapnell talked about or ILD. And interestingly, what they found is that the patients with pulmonary symptoms um, develop these symptoms either at the same, 70 percent of them develop these symptoms either at the same time or soon after the discontinuation of some of these biologics that we're talking about using for the treatment of PAH. So data is a little bit conflicted right now um, regarding whether or not tocilizumab or anakinra might have a role in the treatment of PAH. So just to, to end here, um, the best studied immunosuppressive regimen in connective tissue disease pH is cyclophosphamide and steroids, um, particularly in lupus and MCTD, not so sure about in scleroderma patients. And the effectiveness of other immunosuppressants really we can't uh, comment on until we have some randomized clinical trial data. So just to spur off the panel discussion, some of the unanswered questions that everyone's been talking about today, how to identify the patients who will respond to Im immunosuppressive therapy? Which immunomodulators should we be using? Um, and when should immunosuppressive therapy be started? So just want to uh, thank our group here at Stanford, particularly Yan Sung, who's been very helpful in putting some of these slides together. And um, of course, um, Mark Nichols and Roham Zamanian. So thank you all for, for staying, and we can open it up to discussion.